Today is uh, the food episode, and we got hungry, so we went out and grabbed a snack. <laughs> Sorry. We can't yes. start the show on an empty stomach. Um, Thank you. Yes. Now, speaking of which, we are, of course, talking about one of our all-time favorite subjects, which is food. Uh, if anyone yes. knows Wilson and I, they know that we are passionate about food. We will travel for food. And I don't mean we'll travel like a few blocks of food. We will travel to different countries for food. Um, uh, and in line with that, Ro, uh, what would you say are some of your top uh, food choices from around the world? Well, I I'm just going to narrow it down and just to be fair, because I can say every country is out for something fantastic, but off the bat, Mexican food, Japanese food, and I got I to gotta say it, Filipino food, which is shocking to me, but I had to think about that. I, I've been thinking about that. It's, it always changes. Filipino food is top three for me. Uh, what yeah. about you, Sir Nelson? Um, I've always been a fan of Italian. Okay. Um, I love Japanese as well. Mm -hmm. Thai. Um, hmm. I really enjoy Thai food. Um, I did not appreciate Mexican food until recently. Okay. When I actually spent like a considerable amount of time in, in Mexico. Um, and I've got a couple of favorite uh, Filipino dishes. Um, my, and this is, this is a question I'm going to ask you, but I'll, I'll just, since I'm, uh, I'm on the topic, I'm going to mention, give uh, some love to our home country here. My favorite Filipino dishes are tinola. I mm. love, love, love tinola like crazy. Mm -hmm. It's so good for you. It's so healthy. You know, whenever you've got the sniffles, I always grab tinola. And my favorite dessert in the Philippines is turon. It's just, <laughs> it's, it's mind-blowingly good. Everyone, I know everyone will say adobo, and adobo is great, and, um, and uh, they'll, they'll say leche flan or something. But for me, it's tinola and turon. How about you? What's your favorite Filipino? Interesting. Interesting choices. Um, mine has nothing to do with what you said regards to healthy Filipino food, which is I consider to be an oxymoron. So I go, I go all in. Uh, any ulam that has to deal with rice, I, I have to have rice with it. So adobo, for instance, that's everything. Uh, just a good, yeah, exactly. Well, pretty much, pretty much. But the the exceptional dishes that that require rice, kare kare, of course, a good peanut buttery. Smooth kari kare flavored. Uh, I mean, um, a kari kare dish, uh, adobo, of course. Um, yeah. So anything that has to do with rice, I'm all about it. That's what that's what I love. I can't just eat something that just doesn't have rice accompany it because you know rice is everything. Rice is life. Rice is sir. life. Rice is life. Food is a big deal in our travels. As I mean. You know, most people, when they travel, they're all about checking off the boxes. And if you were to look at their boxes, it's visiting monuments. It's visiting uh, historical places. Uh, it's maybe seeing, you know, a, a concert or a musical play um, or, or something, you know, that has to do with, uh, you know, a cultural experience. Rarely is it a food choice or it doesn't reach, you know, most people's top 10. But, you know, for us, I mean, top food is, you know, maybe the second thing we want to do as soon as we land. Yeah, um, yeah. as we, soon we, as we land, we're like, okay, let's dump our bags and go eat. Exactly. How many countries and I, have we landed in? No matter what time it is, it could be like three in the morning. We've taken that cheap ass, like budget air flight to get there at a, some god awful hour. We check in. Most people just want to crash out. We're like, okay, dump the bags. Let's go find some street food. You mentioned, um, you mentioned some of your, your favorite food. Uh, your favorite places for food, like Japan. What are your favorite dishes from Japan? Well, you, you got to go with their specialty. You know, seafood, I mean, uh, unfortunately, you can't experience this because you're allergic to seafood, but it yeah. is the most pristine place when it comes to seafood. Their seafood is worshipped, and uh, it's massaged, and it's... Um, you know, put on a pedestal. It really is the way they treat their fish, the way they treat each cut. It's as if it's a bar of gold, you know, um, a, 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 a fleshy piece of gold. And I absolutely love their discipline, uh, you know, and their respect for the food. And it's just phenomenal. And they keep it as 
simple as possible. So you actually enjoy the true flavors. It might be, you know, a little bit earthy and, and, and um, uh, not flavorful, but it is flavorful in, in a organic way. You know, uh, that's what I love about the true Japanese food. You know, I'm, I'm not talking about, um, you know, uh, <laughs> your basic uh, takeout Japanese, but the true <laughs> Japanese dining is fantastic. And the rituals that are involved as well. Yeah. Well, how about some of the, uh, the the fusion Japanese that you see now? Like they they take a traditional Japanese dish and then um, and then they they do something to uh, not to improve it, just to to make a new dish. Right, right. Uh, I I know exactly what you're talking about. I'm a huge fan of that. Growing up in California, I of course love sushi, and I love how California. When you dine in California, you know, uh, Japanese restaurants, the, they're a bit edgier, um, uh, especially the ones in L.A., Santa Monica, San Francisco, uh, Silicon Valley. They're catering to a younger, hip crowd that, of course, they like the traditional sushi, but they want to, you know, explore more. And, and I know chefs hate the word fusion, but it is fusion. It is fusion of modern uh, ingredients and modern ways of cooking and uh rethinking you know traditional dishes and 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 you know having it out of the box um and it's phenomenal so makis uh sushi bakes you know uh dragon rolls scallops it, it's adding heat to sushi which is unheard of uh you know um well, there's, yeah there's so wasabi. Oh, oh you mean like you mean yeah. like fire heat not not like yes 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 temperature yeah. temperature heat yeah because you wouldn't do that to sushi normally unless you flame throw it uh like a, a booty style all right. Well, I would have done the same. Some thing. of the other, um, uh, some of the other countries. Uh, I know that when we go to, uh, for instance, Bangkok and Hanoi, when we go to Thailand and we go to Vietnam, they have some of the most amazing food that you can find on the street, which is something that I really appreciate. I mean, going to a nice fancy restaurant's all, all you know, fine and good, but if you go to a country that has good street food, then you need to eat on the street, and sometimes. Like you know, the the the, the filthier the uh, the environment, the tastier the food. I don't know. Somehow the grit and grime lends a flavor. Like if you want to have a really good pho in Vietnam, you don't go to the fancy restaurant. You just go. You go to the diviest looking place that's just packed with people, and the food is out of this world. Would you agree? Um, no doubt, sir. No doubt. Um, I I don't know what it is about. You know, them, uh, you know, the food just being phenomenal on the street as opposed to restaurants. I don't even recall eating in a restaurant in Thailand, you know, having visited maybe five, six times. We've never, I've, I've been to Thailand all five times with you and I don't think we've ever eaten in a restaurant. It's always plastic chairs and outdoor on, on yeah. the curb. And uh, yeah, the, that's the way we like it. And that's, that's yeah. the tastiest, no? And, and when it comes to, you know, going to these places, uh, you know, Thailand and Vietnam in particular, the best way to find the, you know, the, the, I guess the tastiest out of all of them or the one that really resonates, you've got to ask a local because yeah, more than likely, you know, there's a row of them when you go into a, you know, an alley and then they'll have a mm -hmm. row of vendors and you don't know which one to pick, who's the best one. They all look fantastic. All the seats are full. Uh, so the best thing to do there is you either hopefully know a local, you know, can ask a friend or you can go online and simply ask which, you know, which, which place to go and which vendor in particular, or, you know, on, on the websites as well, you know, foodie, foodie fans are very passionate and they want to share where the best experience is. Uh, and, and, and that's, what's great about, you know, foodie fans. That's something that they want to share. They're never going to, you know, do you wrong. Um, yeah. That's what I love about the food community when it comes to travel. No, wouldn't you agree? Yeah, absolutely. Um, everyone's very, very happy to share. It's and even yes. here in the, in the Philippines, everyone's very happy to share like their new their new secret spot. You know, well, obviously it's not going to be secret for very long. But if they say, "Oh my God, I just found this amazing place that does this amazing, you know, whatever food," I was going to say one thing that I wish that we had more of here in the Philippines is more of that kind of street food. We have we have like the barbecue and we have uh, that kind of stuff, but I want like hawker center type like Filipino street food. Because a lot of the times um, I find that the workers, they go downstairs and they go to the street, but it's all, it's all laid out and it's all pre-cooked. So it's been sitting there for hours. Yes. And, 
And I'm like, eh, I want, yeah. I want either, like someone to have a wok and like a, uh, like a burning stove and just, you know, whip up a quick stir fry. Like imagine doing like a, a quick adobo on, in a wok in a few minutes. So yeah. you get it hot and fresh instead of one that's been sitting there for like, you know, a few hours. Um, yeah, I think that would yeah. make a huge difference to Philippine street cuisine. Um, all right. So what, uh, what are some of your other favorite food? You said, uh, Mexico, Mexican, right? I know you, you grew up in California, so you're all about the Mexican food. You've been telling me for years, you've been saying, okay, you know, Mexican food, you know, it's, it's this, it's like that. Oh, this is, this is authentic. This isn't authentic. And I was like, well, yeah, Mexican food, tacos, right? Um, you fed me my first authentic Mexican taco, uh, when we crossed the border from, uh, from, San Diego many, many years mm -hmm. ago, out of this place that you probably, that would probably fail the health standards of any uh, Western <laughs> country. Um, <laughs> but it was great. And um, I went back to Mexico last year and I spent like uh, over a month there. And yeah. I loved it. The elote corn, which oh, yeah. is... I'm not sure what that elote red stuff they, they put on it or the what that uh, like mayo cream butter combination is that they put on it, but it is delicious. And the other dish there, which has now become a hot favorite of mine, is something called chilaquiles. Now, if anyone has if, how to describe chilaquiles, imagine a lasagna that crossbred with a with nachos. That is what chilaquiles is. Because it's a layer of nacho chips and meat and guacamole and sour cream and cheese. And then it's got another layer of nacho chips and guacamole and sour cream and meat and cheese and beans. And you've got layer upon layer of this. It is a nacho lasagna and it is delicious. And this is what Mexicans eat for breakfast. Um, it completely blew my mind. You know why it's breakfast, right? Why? Because it's it's the leftover tortillas from the night before, and you know they don't want to waste it. So the night before, um, <laughs> you know, when dinner's done or, or whatever, they'll put the leftovers and and pile it in that way that you uh, talked about, and then you know prepare it that evening so it'll get nice and soggy and 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 just just soak up all that sauce and and. Uh, you know, this is from my understanding. And then the next morning you have it ready. So it's, I love how they reinvented a dish made from leftovers. Wow. That's, that's awesome. When I had it, it was baked, so like the top was still crispy. The, the chips on the top were crispy and the cheese was melted. Okay. But then, yeah, they did. The lower layers were, were a little soft and, but it was just. Right, right, it right. Yummy. It was like, so yeah. you had that nice crunchy texture as well. Oh, oh. so good. Oh, so good. It's, it's, so, it's. Uh, you know, the funny thing about uh, every nation has their one defining dish. Yeah. And I believe it to be, uh, I, it's got to be the taco for Mexico. You know, it's got to be the taco. It, yeah. That dish transcends all cultures. In fact, a lot of cultures have adopted it, um, you know, and called it their own version, what have you. But, you know, for me, I still find it very me Mexican. Um, and it's just so fun. I love eating with my hands. You know, nine out of the top 10 foods in my life are um, finger foods. And taco is definitely, you know, one of the top. And you put everything in it. And, and, you know, I'm a guy. I don't like doing dishes. I, I just like to eat with one hand and then just wash my hands and I'm good. Um, and you can just put all kinds of different flavors in it and, and all kinds of different meats, seafood, uh, and, and the Philippines for the longest time could not master Mexican, which was so disappointing for a California boy. We have mastered every single dish, no, every single cultural dish known to man, you know, uh, from Thai, you know, our Pinoy dish, our Pinoy chefs can cook Thai like nobody's business. Chinese food, we kill it. Italian food is phenomenal here in the Philippines. Uh, you know, even Balkan food I've had here and it was pretty good. You know, we've run the gamut. We've conquered it all except Mexican food, which is shocking. And we even have real live Mexicans and Latinos that live here 
and they still can't even master their own food here. It's it must be an ingredients thing, and it's so disheartening. But we've gotten so much better, bro. The Mexican food yes. has jumped up notches. You know, you've had I've taken you to some restaurants that that have uh, fantastic Mexican food. So we are catching up, and it just shows you the ingenuity and the skill of Pinoy's as as chefs. It's it's so, it's, uh, you know. The funny thing about every nation has their one defining dish. Yeah. And I believe it to be, uh, I, it's got to be the taco for Mexico. You know, it's got to be the taco. It, yeah. That dish transcends all cultures. In fact, a lot of cultures have adopted it, um, you know, and called it their own version, what have you. But, you know, for me, I still find it very me Mexican. Um, and it's just so fun. I love eating with my hands. You know, nine out of the top 10 foods in my life are um, finger foods. And taco is definitely, you know, one of the top. You put everything in it. And, and you know, I'm a guy. I don't like doing dishes. I, I just like to eat with one hand and then just wash my hands and I'm good. Um, and you can just put all kinds of different flavors in it and, and all kinds of different meats, seafood, uh, and, and the Philippines for the longest time could not master Mexican, which was so disappointing for a California boy. We have mastered every single dish, no, every single cultural dish known to man, you know, uh, from Thai, we, you know, our Pinoy dish, our Pinoy chefs can cook Thai like nobody's business. Chinese food, we kill it. Italian food is phenomenal here in the Philippines. Uh, you know, even Balkan food I've had here and it was pretty good. You know, we've run the gamut. We've conquered it all except Mexican food, which is shocking. And we even have la real live Mexicans and Latinos that live here and they still can't even master their own food here. It's, it must be an ingredients thing and it's so disheartening, but we've gotten so much better, bro. The Mexican food yes. has jumped up notches. You know, you've had, I've taken you to some restaurants that, that have uh, fantastic Mexican food. So we are catching up and it just shows you the ingenuity and the skill of Pinoy's as, as chefs. Yeah, and it, the great thing about, uh, I think, Filipinos and is uh, our biggest export in the Philippines are its people. And a lot of them work in the service industry, whether they be in cruises, on cruises, or in restaurants, or whatever. And a lot of them are going and they're working in kitchens and becoming chefs and learning um, from amazing chefs around the world or just learning different cuisines. You can go to almost any country and you, you can find a Filipino in the kitchen somehow. Yeah. And a lot of them are now coming back to the Philippines and opening up restaurants and like, you know, like, yeah, what of, you know, uh, uh, there might be some that, you know, worked in Italy, so they opened an Italian restaurant. Some working in mm -hmm. Spain, they opened a Spanish restaurant. You know, some working in Mexico, they opened a Mexican restaurant. You know, Japan, Japanese. Um, and this is uh, a big advantage, I find, for, uh, for the Philippines, because you go to a lot of other Asian countries, and, I mean, when you go to Thailand, they have, an, they have amazing Thai food, like out-of-this-world Thai food. Mm -hmm. But you won't necessarily find decent Mexican food there. You might, you, you'll have a couple of good Italian restaurants owned and, and run by Italians. Mm -hmm. But in the Philippines, because we export so many Filipinos and then they all come back, bringing all of this knowledge back in, and because we speak the international language of English and, and so we're able to, to travel around, um, we can bring back so many flavors from around the world, and we do. I think the only thing that we need to work on is our produce. If we can get our produce uh, to be like world standard uh, so that, for instance, like, you know, to cook Mexican food, you need certain types of like Mexican chilies and everything that aren't grown here. Um, mm -hmm. If you can grow them here, then you can have that quality food. To your point, sir, uh, I'd like to add, and you can back me up on this because you lived it just like I did. When I arrived here in uh, 1999, around 2000, that era, there were no food choices. As, the only thing were, you know, chain restaurants, um, yep. you know, fast food. Uh, I remember a Bob's Big Boy. There might have been a CPK just arrived. That's California Pizza, Pizza Kitchen. Yep. Uh, but there were no outstanding mom and pop Filipino, you know, restaurants. I mean, apart from Goldilocks, of course, and, and Red Ribbon and what have you, but that's still considered chain, you know? There were no uh, independently, uh, just there were no independent chefs with their own standalone restaurants, you know what I'm saying? And and yeah. I was, 
I was like, no, this is this can't be this can't be true. You know, I, I'm I'm living my dream of living in the Philippines and having a blast with the weather and the people and uh, you know the culture and and meeting new and and meeting new friends and and starting my career, but the food scene is the worst in the world here. And I'm like, Oh, I guess this is God's way of cursing you, you know, saying you can't have it all, you know? And, and I'm so jealous of the, you know, the people that are just enjoying food now, but I'll tell you, it was not like this 20 years ago. The food scene just started making a uh, comeback around, you know, 10 years ago, definitely five years ago. But yeah, yeah, we are in a food renaissance right now. And if you are eating food and you have a phone, um, you have at your fingertips the best food in the world right now. Seriously. I agree with you 100%. I, I think one of the reasons why, uh, like a couple of decades ago, it was harder to find that kind of food was number one, all of those people were still overseas, you know, still working in those places. They, a lot of the Filipinos hadn't come back yet. There was still that, that culture of like, oh, overseas is, is, is better, so I need to go there and work and everything. But all of those people that went overseas have now like learned what they've learned and they've come back, number one. Number two, the availability of ingredients because um, for the longest time, uh, the Philippines had a hard time having getting imported ingredients in order to make some of these things. Even things uh, as simple, uh, I remember going further back, like dairy wasn't a big thing, so it was hard to get ice cream. Um, or even like real potatoes, everything was sweet potatoes. Uh, now, you can get almost anything in the Philippines. Um, uh, you, can, uh, you can go to certain delis and get specialty foods that you've got the you know, the Indian, you know, spice stores, you've got like the, you know, the Turkish delis, you've got all of these different things. So mm -hmm. now you have that available at your fingertips. Um, but mm -hmm. you're right, there has been an absolute renaissance. And now people come to the Philippines to do food tripping. Um, and yes. not necessarily just on Filipino food. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we've had yeah. friends that have come and we're like, oh, what are you going to do in Manila? You're going to go out to the islands? They're like, Oh no no no! We we want to stay in Manila for like five or six days. They're like, why? Because the food scene is so good here. I'm like, really? Oh yeah, yeah. You're right. I guess it is. Okay. Um. Well, obviously, uh, Japan. You've got your you've got your sushi. Mm -hmm. Um. Mm -hmm. I will always go for uh, ramen. The, nice. the most amazing ramens in the world are yeah. Yeah, definitely Japan. And the great thing about Japan is you can get good food anywhere, even in a in a uh, like a convenience store. They have amazing restaurant quality food that you can warm up in a microwave. Um, I remember, if I can interrupt, I remember we spent one week in Japan when we were shooting for the Duke. The Duke. Well, one of yeah. our episodes, yeah. And we were there for quite a while. They rented us a an apartment, and this apartment was right on top of a Seven Eleven. That Seven Eleven was our go-to shopping uh, place for food. It, 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 it's so funny because we had a grocery store just a couple blocks away, but we decided that 7-Eleven had way more delicious food than, than the grocery store. It and it was so mind-boggling. Yeah, I mean, you, you had your you know uh, yakisoba mixes and your, yeah, your, you your, your real your, your sushi. Right. Your, 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 your ebi tempura. You had those, those great. Those, uh, those tri those rice triangles wrapped in um, right. in uh, seaweed and oh, right, right, right. Spam was, masubis. <laughs> yes. Was, yeah. Oh, so so, so, so uh, tip tip to all you guys out there if you ever go to Japan and you want to have a pretty cool food experience on a budget, check out Seven Eleven. It's yeah. just as good, just as delicious. All right. How about you? What's what's another great uh, what's another great country? Well, you know, the one we just did recently, I, I just, I still can't get over it. It has the same qualities as far as grittiness and the grittier it was, the tastier it was. And I love this country's food because I grew up with uh, a lot of the, my, a lot of my neighbors, well, I'll say the country, Vietnam. Vietnam, when we visited, was just like Thailand, and and we had two dinners a night. You know, every night oh. we had brunch, we had merienda, and you know what? We didn't feel guilty or bad because 
eating all that food because, well, number one, we were walking a lot, but number two, yeah. it was so clean and fresh. It you didn't feel bloated or you didn't feel bad. Of course, you if you stayed away from the noodles and the vermicelli, but if you ate all the other stuff, it wasn't too bad. You know, that's where I got introduced to uh, uh, buncha. Yes. Uh, oh my god! Which is it's like it's a mixture. You've got like the cold noodles. You've got the the roasted uh, the the roasted chick or chi no, pork, and then roasted mince, and then all these vegetables, and then this sort of dipping soup almost that you'd like just grab bits and dip it in there and and eat it with your your chopsticks and you get to choose how much of each ingredient you want so in a way you're almost like a chef but everything tastes absolutely amazing um i'd never ever heard of it before i didn't know what to expect but it was fantastic and it's something that i think anyone if you enjoy vietnamese food uh it's not something that you find on a lot of uh restaurants known uh people just don't know about it but uh if you ever have the chance try buncha um i see that teresa mato is uh, mentioned uh she loves vietnamese coffee too oh yeah oh, yeah vietnamese yes coffee. winner black it's, crack uh, <laughs> it's strong it is strong it is um, and I, I love that oh. they embrace the whole they have their own cow coffee society their own coffee culture you know if you go there their cafes i mean of course they were uh, a former french colony so they're adopting the whole you know uh, coffee experience from the french yeah. but um it, it i love how they're incorporating it with the asian flavor you know so uh, a typical cafe in vietnam would just be a bunch of uh, monoblock chairs of course they're one half the size of Filipino monoblock chairs, they're tinier and lower to the ground, but uh, Vietnamese, you know, they yeah, fit so knees perfectly up to in there. Chest. Knees <laughs> up to there, yeah, but they fit so perfectly. They're facing one direction usually, and that's out to the street. And there's a little tiny table, and, you know, the waitress will come up to you and ask you what you want, and you just say a coffee, and they'll serve you coffee, and you'll sit, you'll hang out there for, you know, five minutes, ten minutes, an hour, two hours. It's, it's, it's all good. It's part of uh, the culture, it's a very common sight, and I love that uh, you know that way of people watching. It's really a cool vibe in Vietnam. Right? Oh, I agree. I agree one hundred percent. Really, it's, it's uh, <coughs> if you've never been, it's an amazing country to visit just for the food. Guys, there's so many different amazing uh, types of food that we could talk about. We could actually do this all night long, but I think that. Uh, as much as we'd like to think of ourselves as experts on food, uh, that's just because we love to eat and we're pigs. <laughs> but it may be time to bring in a real expert. So, ladies and gentlemen, without much further ado, here is a little segment that we like to call We Need New Friends. How's it going? Cheers. Hey! Hey! Cheers. Welcome, JP. Cheers. Yes. <laughs> no, but we love you. We appreciate you coming in. We know you're super busy. But, uh, you know, for everyone out there, can you tell us how you got your start in the cuisine world? Sort of like food was always, you know, it, like, I was always drawn to it. Every time we go to a restaurant, I would always just sit in front of the kitchen and just, I don't know, subconsciously, it just like, I don't know, it just amazed me. Like the fire, like, like sometimes when we're in a Chinese restaurant and, you know, they do the the walk thing and, and oh, yeah. you see the flyer, uh, the flambe. And so I guess, yeah. And then, and then, uh, and I wasn't really good, um, with anything in school. Uh, <laughs> like I failed a lot of <laughs> subjects, tried a lot of universities. Uh, then it was just really cooking that I kind of like, you know, did okay. And then finally, yeah, then I said, all right, might as well, you know, take this seriously and um, go from there. And yeah, now after like, I don't know, uh, 13, 14 years, um, yeah, I'm still loving what I'm doing and it's great. Yeah, it's been a good, it's been a good ride. Uh, you know, lots of, uh, you know, you earn your stripes, you know, like what you guys mm -hmm. said earlier that you go overseas, you, you know, you, you get, you, you know, you, you do the work. You bust your balls, you know. You do the, the 
the you know the 12 hour shifts um all that and then you come home and sort of like then you give back and or you share you share uh what you've learned right and then so yeah but like what you guys were saying earlier i was super interesting uh topic by the way i was just sitting <laughs> oh, here thank you like, i can just listen <laughs> Oh, um, thank you. I my second drink already. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, what do you call this? Yeah. So, yeah, well, been, when, when you ride, when you said you uh, you went overseas and you, and you worked overseas for a while, uh, uh, where were you and what kind of uh, restaurant? I was actually in Sydney for oh five wow years. my hometown yeah yeah so um, I was there uh, you know like zero love life you know um zero social life just in the kitchen just you know like just really like what i said you know like just really busting your balls and, you know earning your that's what my my ate told me which you guys actually know of Ado a safari she was i remember like back oh, in the day yes yeah, yeah. oh yeah oh <laughs> so that's, damn that, that's your ate yeah tracy tracy yes. yeah tracy a bot yeah. right yeah. Oh, no, no, no. Right? Wasn't it Tracy yeah, the, Abad? The first time I no, heard no, about not you guys. Oh. The first time I heard about you guys when my, well, of course, I'm, you know, in Bacolod, you know, I watch you guys. And so that's why I was super stoked being in this program. I'm like, fuck. All right. They're inviting me? Shit. Okay. I'm, <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> oh, we're excited to have you, man. I'm, I'm, oh, we're uh, super excited. Well, yeah, it's nice so, to know that you, uh, you you earned your stripes in uh, in Sydney. The, I mean, there's some pretty intense kitchens over there, and, and another place with yeah. uh, with uh, an amazing fusion of food because it's just absorbed so many different cultures of immigrants coming in from all over the world. Um, exactly. And I feel like the Philippines could be like that if we had the sort of produce that we that uh, Australia has. Um, right. Because and also, yeah, yeah, and also sorry. Um, also, what you were saying earlier. You know that approach to food like when you guys say like Revilson was saying um in vietnam like everything is so clean and fresh and then you were saying like in thailand everything is like just you go to the streets and you get like the best pad thai you got to go yeah. to greenville and pay a thousand bucks for a pad thai right so yeah i mean yeah. it's just really i guess it's not it's the approach i think it's not really the ingredients it's like mm -hmm. our mentality how we approach food and I don't know. I, I don't know. I guess we're so Americanized, you know, like we're so, right. we're, we're, you know, everything is from a packet. Everything is from a carton or like, all right, three in one. Okay. Open it. Oh, you know, mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. three in one. In, yeah. uh, Instantaneous I, chef. Uh, sorry, Mark. Um, yeah. if, can I ask this question? Oh. I've been wanting to ask you, um, you, of course you describe yourself as Filipino chef. So I love that part about, Obviously, you're pro Pinoy and you're pro Filipino dishes. Every nation and and cuisine has had their their shine already. You know, we, the Thai the Thai uh, Renaissance came and gone. Uh, I think right now we're going through the Korean uh, Renaissance. Uh, Vietnam food was a couple of years ago. When is Filipino food, and what does it take? What do we need to do to it to make it the next hit, the next Asian food? hit the, the, the go-to restaurant in New York. What do we need to do to it, brother? Because all I know is all the food is delicious, but when you look at it, it's all brown. Every dish is brown. You know what I'm saying? I, I guess you need to make it look better as well, but tell me what you think we need to do to be the next uh, food hit. All right, first of all, I think it's starting already, but I think, again, then the approach, the mentality, sorry, I gotta say it. We gotta stop crab mentality. Like we gotta all just unite. I mean, and that's yes. what COVID is teaching us, right? That's what yeah. this pandemic, this situation is teaching us. We're nicer to each other. We're nicer to the security guards. We're nicer to the grab drivers. Um, we're nice. We're just not like my supervisor. I've never known him for the past three years. Now I know that you know what what that he doesn't like eggplant. You know, like <laughs> and so, <laughs> sorry, sorry, green, something green. I just he, he told me this earlier, so. I'm like, oh, okay. You don't have to tell me that. Um, uh, so I'm allergic to it. He he just doesn't like your eggplant. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, because um, yeah, we small. Uh, never mind. Let's not go there. Um, <laughs> yes, okay. Organic, no mind. It's organic. <laughs> yeah. So no, I but guess, uh, yeah, we just gotta really, I guess, cut the bullshit. Let's all just help each other. Um, you know, let's. Uh, I mean, the moment you you succeed, someone wants to pull you down. Someone's like, it's just, it's a, it's, it's a rat. You know, it's a rat race. Come on, let's just be united. I was in Spain uh, a few months ago and everyone over there, that's why their cuisine is thriving because even them, even though they're competitors, but they're united and they all like sort mm. of like have one goal is to, is to um, yeah, bring like, you know, bring it forward. So I guess with us, first of all, I mean, the ingredients are there. I mean, it's yes, they say it's the next big thing. Anthony Bourdain helped us a lot. Uh, you know, we got the World Street Food Congress, we got the Madrid Fusion, everything. It's all there. All we have, all the ingredients. But then, I guess, but that's something that's gonna be coming from within, and that's you know, that's gonna be difficult. So, all right, I, I have a question for you. I've got a follow up question to that. If you had to demonstrate Filipino food to the world stage, if you if you had a panel of judges from around the world and you wanted to impress them with how good Filipino food was, what are what is the three course meal that you would prepare? Okay, so Mark Nelson on a plate of rice. <laughs> <laughs> what sushi roll? Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> Recently, I went to this convention, and so it's sort of like in Spain, and it was their first time to invite uh, the Philippines because it was like the theme was like part of the galleon trade, like uh, the journey of uh, El Cano around the world, something like that, right? So Philippines was part of it. So we were, it was the Philippines and Indonesia because they, they, they you know, they went from Spain to Portugal, then to South America, then to Indonesia, then to the Philippines. So anyway... And I said, "Hey, I'm a Filipino chef. Uh, I'm not gonna give them. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna present like any fine dining stuff because that's not us." So I gave mm. them a budo fight. I gave them a budo oh. fight, and I mm. yeah. And these are like snooty people, huh? Like these are like three Michelin, two Michelin chefs, you know? Like no like, way. They have home, they have like all these like crazy things that I can't. I'm like, what the fuck is that? And then and I'm and I'm here and I and I have a banana leaf. And then, like, I put everything there. And uh -huh. and I told them, I told them, perdón, no cubiertos, we're going to eat with our hands. And they did. At first, they were like, uh. And I go, yes, that is how we eat in the Philippines. And anyway, so basically, I guess, to answer your question, what I did is I, we have this dish in where I'm from, uh, in the Visayas. It's called binacol, chicken binacol. It's like <gasps> chicken. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So imagine... You so what we did is we used their local prawns called carabinero, and then we poached that in coconut water, and then it was beautiful. And I said, I'm going to use your local ingredient, or your I mean your prize possession, you know, like this piece of prawn, this beautiful prawn, and I'm going to poach it in coconut water, and I'm going to add ginger and salt, and that's it. So our dish that you would show to the world is a brutal fight. And, and the coconut, which I think is yes. fantastic because food should also be not just the taste and the, the, the tangible part of it, but the experience. I love eating in, in restaurants that have an experience, you know. I know, um, uh, I mean, I guess a cheesy, apart from boodle, a boodle fight, but another cheesy um, uh, experience would be, or example would be, uh, you know, in front of a tepan, a tepan chef, you know, like yeah. a Benihana, for instance, you know, yeah. I mean that, I know that's not traditional Japanese, but it's a fun experience, you know, exactly. and I like that. Chef, what's your go-to dish? What's your favorite dish to cook? Slash your favorite, uh, your go-to dish. Mm. Mm. Chinese food. Um, I can, like, I, I don't know. I love eating it. I love cooking it. Like every time mm -hmm. I, it's my de default, default choice and default um, cooking. Um, if I don't know anything, if I, if I, I can cook it with my eyes shut, you know, <laughs> like, like I, I kind of like I had, I had a Chinese restaurant for almost twenty years that just like two oh. months ago finally closed down in Bacolod. Um, oh, what yeah, was it called? So, 
It's called Mai Pao. It's a shortcut for Siu Mai and Siu Pao. Ikat is asking, Chef, how do you feel about all the creativity going around the quarantine? There were lots of twists done of traditional recipes. Um, you know, what's your, what's your stance on that? You like all the homemade chefs popping up? I think it's great. You know, everyone's trying to be creative. Everyone's trying to think out of the bo box. Everyone's trying to make a buck. Um, but I guess, you know, we, like what you guys were saying earlier that let's be, hmm, okay, I guess be practical about it. Uh, Cause it, I mean, like there are a lot of trendy stuff happening. Uh, like also what you guys said earlier that I think we should reinforce our street food. And I think now is the time to do that. Like say, let's just, let's just perfect lumpia, you know, let's just perfect, uh, you know, uh, palabok. Uh, but you know, mm. all those trendy stuff are, yeah, I guess they're, they're okay. You know, they, they pay the bills and they keep you busy and keep you sane. But, mm. uh, Mm, All right. Well, in, in, in moderation. Let's ask you which ones. Let's ask you yeah, which ones in, in and what's your take on it. I'm going to mention uh, five uh, quarantine food trends, and then tell me which ones you want to see survive after quarantine, and which ones you want to leave <laughs> behind and just lock hey, that shit up. Before, before I answer, before, before no. I answer this question, actually, we okay. were talking to my earlier, and I was here. Like, we here we go. Myself. Okay. Dalgona right. coffee. Ube uh, Pantasal. No, no, one at a time, one at a time. Okay, one see at a time. Dalgona yeah. Coffee. Bye. Yay or nay? See you later. Bye. <laughs> later. Bye. Yeah. Okay. Okay, next. Ube, Ube Pantasal. Pantasal. A lot of people are doing it. Um, it used to be so special. There, that's my answer. <laughs> it used to be so special. All right. I mean, it used to be um, so good, too. Yeah. What? It used to be so good, so good as well, but I guess, hey, um, in fairness, logistics is very difficult. It's very difficult to get ingredients. I mean, you're short of staff, like your staff, you know, they take like two, three hours just to get to work, just to make. So I guess yeah. I'm, I'm earlier, I want to be very careful with my answers here. I want to be empathetic. <laughs> Yes, yes. No, but Ube Pandesal, uh, yeah, it had a great run as far as when it was very limited. And then everyone, yeah, it, it, it just caught on fire. Everyone, you know, thought they could do it and they did it. And uh, it kind of watered down the, the how originals, it how special cronuts. it was. Yes. Yes, I was just going to say cronuts. <laughs> All right, moving on before we get in trouble. Uh, next okay. one up, Mr. Nelson. Uh, is baked sushi. Baked you sushi. What's your take? Yes, no I comment, was. Never tried it. Okay, okay, good answer. You'll take the fifth. All right. Base. How about sourdough? Uh, Everyone's making homemade sourdough. Hey, it's unlocking your skills, right? So yeah, I'm all for it. Like everyone okay. knows a baker. I mean, if there's gonna be Master Chef Philippines again, I mean, there's gonna be. It, there is going to yeah. be some stiff competition. Absolutely. So yeah, and go. Last, yeah, do it. The last but one. But I feel and sorry I, for. I, yeah. I go really ahead. I feel sorry for the people that been that been making it for a decade. You know that that that's perfected it. That's been you know it's been their bread and butter. Like these these like great bake shops and cafe. You know, and now everyone's doing it. So there's there's just competition everywhere. That's true. But if they've been doing it for longer, then hopefully theirs is better. Um, oh, we'll see. Uh, Ro, what are some of the other uh, pet peeves you have about the uh, the restaurant industry? Any others? Well, I, I uh, uh, Chef JP touched up on it, and it is the I'm all about the experience, as you can tell, because I know the food will be nine times out of ten, the food is usually good, you know, but um, or edible um so uh, the experience just really adds the brownie points and yeah uh i just wish the waitresses slash waiters would be more attentive and and that would just you know increase their potential for higher tips that's it that's all so it's a symbiotic relationship that's my uh, second pet peeve how about you guys um freezing cold air con <laughs> okay. agreed I don't want okay. to have to wear a sweater inside a restaurant to eat. Agreed. Like, and, and, and sitting at the table where it's like, it's you know, just like 
blowing on you at you know at, at yeah. the highest at the highest yeah, speed, right. and you just like, right. yeah. and it's also making all your food go cold. Oh, um, that's the yeah. worst. Food cold is the worst. Yeah. Yeah. Cold yeah. food. Good one. Good one, Mark. How about you, Chef? Um, I guess for me, overpriced, overpriced food. It kind of like there's a lot of that. You charge me that much for, you know, for this. Yeah, that that kind of like. I don't know because mm. yeah, yeah, fair enough. All right, fair enough. I, have, I have a question for you, Chef. Um, uh, it's very uh, pertinent to the the current situation. As a restaurateur, um, how do you see uh, the industry moving forward uh, in the next six months? I mean, I know that you've adjusted. Uh, if anyone watches your uh, follows your um, Instagram, uh, which is at Chef Japes, um, uh, you'll we'll see that uh, you're talking about boodle fights. You're actually doing um, takeout boodle fights. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> now that's something that I didn't think anyone could really do as a takeout, um, but you, you've managed to adjust. I guess you know because there's so many competition out there. Uh, yeah. Everyone's like. Even even the home cooks now we're now we're competing us restaurateurs we're competing against the the people at home and yeah um, I guess and it's not like before where you know like they go to for lunch they go to you know wherever like they go to Jollibee whatnot now there's just so many choices so you, I guess you constantly gotta keep sort of like, I don't know, reinventing or just innovation or just sort of like reminding them that we're, hey, we're here. So, it's, uh, but yeah, it's going to be challenging. <laughs> nice. Easy, easy. Now, Chef, uh, I want to change speeds a little bit. Um, this is coming from uh, another great um, uh, viewer. Uh, she's asking, this is Carol Nadea, what dishes would be Mark Nelson and I, if we were, I guess, Filipino dishes or any dish, I guess. And describe the cooking, uh, the ingredients and how we are cooked and how we are served. Wow. You know, it's okay. Let me start with Mark. No, cause, um, okay. I, this is back in the day. Uh, uh -huh. you were in Boracay. I was there with my <laughs> high school classmates. Um, we see you walking around, you know, with your six pack and my, 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 my female classmates, high school classmates, we all had a little reunion and we're like, Oh my God, it's Mike Nelson. And then, then, and then we, you hold, you were holding a smoothie, you know, <laughs> Frio Loco, was it? Like, Loco Frio. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And 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 in my mind, I'm like, okay, I guess he's just that's all he has, or that's all he you know he eats because I mean look <laughs> look at his you know and all my all my classmates are like ah and then anyway the next thing next thing I see you in Talipapa buying a kilo of rice. What was I doing buying a kilo? Do you remember of rice? that? Yeah, you were buying rice. <laughs> I, was buying I rice remember for? clearly. You're buying rice. And I was like, I was joking with my high school classmates. I go, maybe he has a lot of birds in his, or like maybe he has a parrot <laughs> in his hotel room. I mean, he, he's buying a kilo of rice, but then you have a six pack over there. I mean, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> so, so, so what is he, chef? Is he buttered pantisal? What, 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 what dish is he? <laughs> okay, fine. maybe he's a suman. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe like on the outside, like on the outside, you know, like a suman is nicely wrapped, banana leaf, yes. tiny, you know, Tight. like slender. But when you open yeah. it, it's rice. It's all <laughs> rice. That, that... Uh, These six searching. packs are just molded out of sticky rice. That's all they are. <laughs> Maybe a suman with it. pandisal. <laughs> yon, yon. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Oh, oh, all right. Uh, all right. Man. Uh, I'm afraid to ask what my dish is. <laughs> maybe you would be like a steamed lapu lapu. You know, it's like, it's big, it's massive, but then it's, you know, it's 
when you eat it, it's you're full, but you don't feel guilty. It's clean. Um, so I don't, I don't, I don't want to sound gay or anything here, but uh, I, wait, did I some of your okay, classmates you know, date Revilson? Yeah, Erwan Yusuf <laughs> always always jokes with me that I'm older, right? I, but you guys are older than me, so. Uh, <laughs> You you just look wiser than us. That's all. Yeah, <laughs> we're just jealous. You can grow facial hair. Yeah, I, I go steam lapu lapu, steam lapu lapu. Like I love it. I'll take yeah. it. There, I'll oh. take it. I'll take it. Now, well, you know what, Jeff? This, this has been this has been an absolute riot. It's been so much fun having you on the show. Um, uh, we're we're sad to to see you go, but we're looking forward to uh, the days when we can come and visit Sarsa and. And uh, have some of those boodle fights and bitter call uh, ourselves yeah. in person, and uh, yeah. have that personal connection with the chef. For sure, for sure. Um, I'll send you guys a message. Um, so what we're what we're gonna do because we can only fit, like the rules now is only you can only fit thirty percent right of your seating capacity. So yeah. we're gonna. Mm. So we we used to sit say sixty seventy. Now we can only, we did the math earlier and with all the, the stuff that we're selling in the restaurant, like our restaurant has become a, you know, we're selling vegetables, we're selling plants. You're selling you know, plants? Like, that's like, all? Yeah, we're selling like awesome. everything under this, like almost everything. And anyway, we, so we have a little section where I guess we'll do some private dining because um, here, at, here at home, we actually do private dinings. We call it 10 Alpha, oh. like private dining. And it's sort of like, just whoever whoever wants to come like we, we we shoot a message to our friends hey we're cooking on this day you want to take a slot so anyway so we're gonna do that at at, uh, at sarsa and we're just gonna accommodate eight and at least it's a you know it's a group and you don't feel like you're you're you feel safe that you're with you yeah. know the people around you and yeah. you get the whole restaurant to yourself and so yeah we're sort of like yeah so I'll, I'll, I'll shoot you guys a message if you guys please do. Yeah. It's, yeah. It, like I said, it's all about the experience. And that yeah. is another experience that you're giving your customers. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, can, can I just request one more thing, a favor? If you ever, again, chef, are in an international competition and you want to show the world our best Filipino dish, this is what you do, chef. You get 10 of your other chef friends. You get all these awesome ingredients. You put it in one dish, and it's a crab dish, and you serve it to them, and you call it crab mentality, and it blows them all away. <laughs> Boom! Yes. Game? <laughs> yes. Good. We love you, Chef. All Thank right. you so much. So we much. love you, man. You appreciate well. appreciate, we'll see you appreciate in your time, sir. Super stoked. Thanks, guys. <laughs> oh, wow. I, you oh, know what? Man. We really need to try and uh, visit him at Sarsa. And one thing we I forgot oh, for to sure. mention when uh, we were talking to him is uh, he's been doing some great work uh, um, uh, during the, the quarantine with uh, Frontline Feeders PH, uh, where you, he's been using the Sarsa kitchen to put together meals that uh, they've been sending out to the frontliners. So, um, yeah, it's great. He's, he's not only a great chef, a great guy, but he's also got a great heart. So awesome yes. dude. Yes. And I love that he speaks the truth. He doesn't yeah. he doesn't pussyfoot. He you know, he's a, speaking from experience and right uh, I, I've used the word experience many times tonight, but he's speaking from experience and, and you listen to people with, with that kind of wisdom. So thank you, JP, for being honest. Here, here. All right. What's up next, now, uh, Nelson? Speaking of speaking of honesty, we've had uh, some very honest answers to our poll questions. Um, so uh, we're going to throw this up. The first one um, was, uh, there are no rules on this dinner. Which table would you go to first? The appetizers mm. or the desserts? Before we, have, before we put the poll up, Revilson, which one would you go for? Appetizer or dessert? Ten years ago, easily desserts. Now appetizers because appetizers usually have alcohol and you mr nelson me hands down appetizers i'm a salty guy yeah so i'll always yeah. go for the salty food before the sweet stuff fair enough Absolutely. all right what does the what does the public have to say let's um, see brrr, drum roll. yes same appetizer table yeah interesting 
I would have thought I it would have... at least been closer to 50-50 because there are some fantastic, insane desserts out now, you know, oh, um, yeah. that, that chefs are making. Yeah, so it would easily cause you to jump uh, the appetizer line. Oh, that was, that was oh, okay, surprising. All right, what's it up yeah. next? What's the next poll, sir? The next one is, which one is spicier? Latin food or Asian food? Actually, when we came up with this, this question, it was, it was actually, is it Mexican or is it Thai? You know, but mm. uh, they, I think uh, it was generalized for the, for the poll uh, with mm-hmm. Latin and Asian. Um, I'm going to say, oh, actually, first let me ask you, Wilson, which do you think is the spiciest Asian food? The sp- food, spiciest Asian food. Uh, well, I, uh, like, would it, would it be Thai food? Would it be Korean? Would it be Indian? Oh, okay. Not specific dish. Got it. Yeah. I thought you meant dish. Uh, I'm going to have to go with their consistently spicy is Thai. Or, no, this region in China. I forgot, but they're like a thousand percent. Every dish uses spices in it. Um, if Guys out there, let me know what you, I know you know what I'm talking about. There's certain, Szechuan? Yeah, Szechuan. Szechuan, or is that a flavor? I'm not sure, but it's it is flavor, every but dish it's is also, spicy. It's also a, uh, I guess, region. Yeah. Okay, region. all right, there. That's what I say. So that region of China is just, everything was on fire. All and, right. Yeah. How about you? How about you? What do you think? I would probably say Thailand. Okay. Uh, just, yeah, they, they love, every time I go there and I say, look, no chili, no chili. Okay. Yeah. No chili. It's not hot. It's not hot. And it's just, yeah. it's just like, I'm, I'm tearing out and sweating <laughs> balls and, um, yeah, they don't know what no chili is. Um, uh, I think there's so much flavor in their food because they've burnt all their taste, but taste buds is the only way they can get the, the flavor through there. Um, but okay. So to answer the poll, which is spicier, Latin or Asian food? Here it is. Ooh. Okay. Oh, yeah. Overwhelming. Overwhelming. Yeah. Now then, uh, as a person very well versed in uh, Mexican food, how spicy mm-hmm. does it really get? Thank you. Yeah. Um, not too spicy, please, but yeah, they're not listening at you. They're like, we'll get you. We'll get you, foreigner. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, oh man but thank you to everybody for uh, answering the polls appreciate it I love the polls they're so much fun uh, speaking of in the future what's our topic for next week Wilson this is this is one that I'm excited because this is a very timely topic Uh, it needs to be said I wish I'm hoping we can go two hours plus on this and it's about self love It's about self-love. We have some, oh my God, I'm really excited to share who the guest is as well, but we won't reveal that until maybe middle of the week. But um, uh, yeah, this is something that uh, we all need to be aware of, you know? Um, Absolutely. Um, A lot of people are, are, there's a lot of stuff going on in, in, around the, uh, around the world. Um, A lot of people are having a hard time um, emotionally and mentally. Uh, So this is a perfect time to bring up uh, this topic of self-love and you know taking care of ourselves. We're gonna c- have a season ender episode very soon and it is going to be dedicated to Tara, otherwise known as the Amazing Race Asia. It's gonna be a fun show. It's gonna go yeah. on for a while and it'll really be a great, uh, great way to uh, top off the season. Yes, of course we can't discount the episode we had today. We'd like to thank Chef JP, a uh, huge fan of everything he stands for. You got to go check out his restaurant or, of course, order from him, uh, Sarsa. Uh, he also apparently has taken, uh, embraced the, the, his green thumb. I'm not sure if it's him or one of his assistants, but his restaurant also sells plants, plants. and potted yep. plants. Yeah, and I love it. I love it. You go in there and plants is something we need right now. I, I, I can't stress it enough. Um, plants add soul to a room and especially since we're all stuck at home you might as well improve you know not just the quality of air because we know what plants do to the air but uh, you know put some soul into the room get a plant get a plant in there and uh, Sarsa not only sells fantastic food they sell wonderful curated potted plants so check them out so ladies and gentlemen thank you once again for joining us on a wonderful 
another wonderful episode of Mark and Rove, otherwise known as... We need new friends. Thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in. Appreciate you. Thank you, new friends. We'll see you next week.